What is up, YouTube? I'm Derek Peterson. That's Greg Smith. You are on Hill Varsity's YouTube page or maybe on Facebook or whatever. Um, Greg had a wonderful idea to kind of just talk about a little more the taking stock of series that I've been doing on HillVarsity.com. I've been going position by position and just sort of resetting the field for where we're at after spring ball with each position group, who's rising, uh, what we learned, what questions we still have. And Greg uh, approached me with this idea of just doing this little reactionary video for five to 10 minutes. We'll just sit here and talk and we'll talk about outside linebackers this time uh, because that is one of the position groups that Greg, I won't speak for you, but I am uh, maybe most interested in coming out of spring. Um, outside linebacker, particularly on the right side of this defense, is maybe a bit of a question mark, but maybe not a question mark because we know who's going to be playing. Um, we obviously know that Jojo Doman is over at that nickel spot on the left side of the defense. And Garrett Nelson played the second most snaps among outside linebackers just behind Jojo Doman last year, sort of at the other spot. He's the starter. Um, 30 tackles, second most among outside linebackers as well, just behind Jojo. I guess, but maybe left you left wanting more with Garrett because the Havoc production isn't quite there. He only had four Havoc plays all year. So Havoc plays are tackles for loss, forced fumbles, uh, and passes defended. Um, so it just in terms of creating those splash plays that you want from your defense, there weren't a ton, but Garrett plays kind of with his hair on fire. After this spring, it seemed like Garrett, it seemed like he, first of all, it seemed like he had a good spring. Um, and it, and it seemed like he really kind of has a hold on that right outside linebacker position or the, the starting outside linebacker position opposite of Jojo Doman. Greg, do you get the same? the same feel about kind of how the, the dynamics are at play there? Yeah, I definitely get that feel. Um, and I think that you're dead on that. I think that the danger for Nelson and the amount of snaps that he's going to play or has played or projected to continue to play is that if he's not creating those havoc plays, those big splash plays for the defense, that it, it becomes a little bit of, okay, can we get those somewhere else? But at the same time, like, you do have to take into account that I, it feels like his play, his play improved last year, that he was playing some of his best football at the end of the season. And I think that that went with the defense um, as a whole, but it, it definitely, I think, was the case for Nelson too. So if he can, like, I'm, I'm just curious on where he can continue to elevate his game and take next steps because he's played a lot of football for Nebraska, but at the same time, he's still a player that, you know, made a transition from a different position coming out of high school um, in which he was, you know, he could, he was probably better suited to be a 4-3 defensive end um, coming out of high school and made the transition to a 3-4 stand-up outside linebacker and has held his own, right? You can't say that he hasn't, um, and he's gotten better. So, like, it's almost at the point, too, and I think this goes along with what you were saying about, like, it feels like the group is kind of a question mark but kind of not because we know who's going to play. We just don't know who's going to give the most production. And I feel like Garrett Nelson falls into that a little bit. We know he's going to play. We just don't know what type of production we're going to get from him, even if he takes, you know, steps forward in his game. Yeah, the good thing with Garrett is he's still, I mean, last year was his first full-time season starting. Uh, and I think he's going to be, is he still going to be labeled as a sophomore? this upcoming yeah. season by eligibility yeah the good thing is he's still got a ton of time um so for him like that next step that you take um i mean he would be he would be one of those like local developmental stories that every program loves oh yeah and after this spring it just kind of sounds like he he's a mike dawson favorite in that he just plays really hard and when you've got guys that just play really hard you just want them on the field um you know, even if it's not creating a, a ton of um, headaches for the defense in terms of pass rushing, getting the quarterback, creating tackles for loss, blowing plays up, force fumbles, whatever. Um, if he's playing hard, if he's running to the ball, if he's if he's he had 30 tackles, it's pretty good, pretty good in eight right. games. Um, and, you know, it might not be completely imperative that he is like a five sack kind of player because Feldarius Payne seemed to have a pretty good spring. Uh, coming out of spring, he was a guy that maybe 
you raised some eyebrows with when, when you thought that he would be Nebraska's leader in sacks? Um, maybe not. Th- you projected, you, you took a guess that he would be Nebraska's <laughs> leader in sacks. Um, he kind of talked us through his, his first like year in Lincoln and it was eventful. Um, I'm just going to read off what I have written. He arrived at Nebraska last summer and needed shoulder surgery. Uh, he was on a rehab schedule for two months. Uh, he said he was benching no more than 25 pound plates on either side when he was rehabbing that shoulder. And then he got COVID. Uh, and all the while he's, he's, he was trying to put on weight to switch from defensive end to outside linebacker. And really as the season went on last year, um, he's, he started to really shine and really started to, to kind of find a rhythm, uh, as a pass rushing outside linebacker, he got 138 snaps, got in for 21 tackles. Is he a guy that, can, can create a good partnership uh, at the outside linebacker spot with Garrett Nelson with being in that, that kind of pass rushing third down sub package role. Yeah, absolutely. I think that at the very least, Feldarius Payne has a role, right? And I guess that I always kind of think of it this way, like you want to, like as a guy on the team, obviously everybody wants to be one of the star players, right? Um, That's the goal. But at the same time, hey man, if you've got a role on the team, like we know that you're going to go to Feldarius Payne and say, hey, your job is X. It's to go and get the quarterback on third downs. And maybe that's like the one thing that you do. Hopefully you can turn into more than that. But if not, we know that you're going to um, make a good attempt to go and do that. I think that that's good, right? Especially coming off of the year that you laid out and the things that happened. Like, it's just kind of incredible to think about all of the things that he had to go through last year, which would have been difficult enough in a normal year, <laughs> when the, in the year that was 2020, and switching positions, right? And so he's having to learn a new defense learn new terminology with that, but then also learn a new position and then have to go through everything. Like I think that he's a guy that could have a major step forward um, and be a key part of the defense. Like, and so I think that he is a guy that I think will has already surprised people based on his play last year, because I don't think the projections were for him to be even what he gave Nebraska last year. And so if he continues to progress and it's kind of natural to think that he will based on just being more comfortable, right? He talked about this as well this spring where he said that he was playing last season, like he was a robot And this spring. He was just out there kind of flying around and able to really understand what was going on. I think that's a huge benefit, um, which actually is something going back real quick to Gary. Garrett Nelson, I think will help Garrett Nelson as well is you to mention now he plays with his hair on fire, which is great. But as he continues to get more and more comfortable in the defense too, that's going to make him appear that much faster and play that much better too. Yeah. It's one thing when we talk about like roles and talk about who's starting and who's coming off the bench. It, I, I think back to basketball where it's not necessarily who starts the first five minutes of the game. It's who's on the field for the, or who's on the court for the last five minutes of the game. That's the most important. And Sometimes with football, it's like who's on the field for the uh, the most impactful plays, who's on the field for uh, the most important plays, and and if he's got like a third down rushing role where he's he's producing, it's a pretty good, pretty good role to have. Um, do you think? Do you do you think that they have? Do, do you think that Dawson has an overabundance of options in this outside linebacker room after this spring? Because we heard about Fadarius Payne improving, we heard about Garrett Nelson sort of continuing the progression as as you would expect from a player his age uh we heard about you know jojo doman's there he didn't practice a ton but he's still there you know what you're gonna get from him and then we heard about guys like javin wright and isaac gifford sort of moving up and trying to be sort of the next man next guys up in that nickel role um they've got what jamari butler at outside linebacker too they've got a couple other guys whose names are Blaze Gunnarsson. I cannot believe I just forgot about Blaze Gunnarsson. Believe that. Oh man, he had a nice play in the spring game too. He um, did. One nice play, and we're getting worked up about it. Uh, <laughs> they've got they've got options. Do you think that this is going to be a, a pretty significant rotation when we get into fall camp? Do you think that there are going to be some snaps up for grabs when we get into fall camp? Because coming out of spring, it seems like they got a lot of guys, and with Javin Wright and Isaac Gifford in particular, maybe you want to see what like a six four. Javin Wright, who can cover, can do on the field. I do. I do think that they have options. The one, the problem is, is there's not a lot 
separating a lot of those options, which is both good and bad. It's good to have that depth, but it's bad because you don't have like a star guy outside of JoJo that you can stick out there and say, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to get from him. And this goes to, not to go like a totally sidetrack here, but this goes to the larger point about the team is that there are just a lot of guys that you're like, man, I could name this guy and that guy and think, man, I, I feel good about him. But at the same time, I don't know what I'm going to get. And I think basically yeah. everyone that you just named at outside linebacker, outside of JoJo Doman, we have no idea what we're going to get coming up this season. It could be really, really good, um, but it could also be regression. Like it could be a step back. We just don't know. Oh, I don't know if it'll be regression. I don't, I don't think, think it will be. I think that I, I would never rule it out, but I don't think it would be regression. I think that would be surprising. But part of the way that you hedge against the regression, though, is you have this many options, right? Yeah. So it yeah, would be true. hard to to see all of those guys taking a step back. I think the thing that is most interesting with this group is, is because you have all of those guys and because I just said, Oh, I don't think there will be regression. Um, they, they could, you could have just, you know, a season like what they had last year. Um, and if you have improved play from the secondary and improved play from the defensive line, what does that look like for your defense? Because the defense probably needs to take another step based off of, their natural progression. I mean, they were better last year. They were better as a run stopping unit. And, and as the season wore on it, it, you know, and I put this in the, the defensive backs um, post part of this series that I did um, the first four games, they were really, really bad at uh, on, on third down. They were really bad on third down. And the last four games they had, it, if you took their percentage over the last four games of third down um, stops, I guess, and extrapolated it over the course of a season, they would have had the number one third down defense in all of college football. If you took just what they did over the last four games and, and, and I know the opponents were different. They had Ohio state in the first half. They didn't have Ohio state in the second half, yada, yada, whatever. It's pretty good. Um, and so I'm curious if you get maybe just like equal play to what you got from the outside linebackers last year is that sustainable? Is it, is it, is it, reasonable to expect them to continue to have one of the better third down defenses in the country or and this is the big question that we've been asking of of this group in, in particular for years now does nebraska need to develop that edge rusher that dominant edge rusher does nebraska have that guy greg i do not think they have that guy right now that would be a dominant edge rusher. I think that Phil Darius Payne can be a guy that helps you get by. Um, and then I think that they can figure it out with different creative packages beyond that. Um, but because of that, I think that the third down defense has to be really good. I think that if you're not going to get those, those sacks and Havoc plays to then make up for some of the plays that you're going to give up, then you would just have to be lights out on third down. When you get teams into, you know, third and five plus, you got to make sure that you stop them. That's been something, especially going back in the first half of the season that they just had a lot of trouble with. Um, and it's been an issue for Nebraska, but the second half from the back uh, in down home stretch of the season they did well with that if they can continue that I don't think that the impact of not you know having a prolific sack master out there will be as big but that's still a big if but I think that they have the pieces to do it to be able to keep teams down on third down I keep leaning back and then realizing my shirt says the University of Texas on it and I keep trying to keep that <laughs> trying to keep that under there it's MD Anderson Center but it's from the University of Texas I didn't know that until I got the shirt now I'm I don't want anybody yelling at me. I've got appearances to keep up here, Greg. I'm a Texas hater. Yeah, well, I don't Always know. A Texas hater. The tide is changing. Well, we said we we're going to keep this short and sweet. Um, this was good. Thanks for the conversation, Greg. Good idea. We'll be back in a couple days doing the same thing, hopefully, with a different position group. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, yeah, lots more to come on Hale Varsity's YouTube page. Greg, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening or for watching, I guess, depending on wherever you are. Cool. See ya.